It's a story that started with bicycles and rice cookers, but ended up reshaping the entire marine industry. The rise of Honda, Suzuki's biggest rival. Did you know that Honda, the company that makes your neighbor's Civic, has been producing four-stroke outboard engines for over 60 years? Yet here's the kicker. They entered the marine market in 1964, just one year before Suzuki launched their first outboard in 1965. But Honda had something Suzuki didn't see coming, an obsession with doing things differently that would turn the entire outboard industry on its head. Today, these two Japanese giants are locked in a battle that's pushed their marine technology further in the last 20 years than it moved in the previous 50. Now, if you told Soichiro Honda back in 1946 that his little bicycle motor company would one day be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Suzuki in the marine world, he probably would have laughed you out of his makeshift garage in Hamamatsu. See, while Honda was still figuring out how to make motorcycles that didn't leak oil all over your driveway, the marine outboard world was completely dominated by two-stroke engines. Mercury, Johnson, Ebinrude, they were all pumping out these screaming two-strokes that were simple, powerful, and about as environmentally friendly as a coal-burning locomotive. The story really starts getting juicy in 1964, when Honda finally decided to dip their toes into the marine market. And boy did they make a splash, pun absolutely intended. Their first outboard engine, the GB30, was this quirky little engine that looked more like something you'd find in a science fiction movie than hanging off the back of a fishing boat. It featured a horizontal shaft design, completely different from the vertical shaft engines everyone else was making. But here's what made it special. It was one of the first mass-produced four-stroke outboards at a time when everyone and their mother was convinced that two strokes were the only way to go. Now I know what you're thinking, four-stroke, two-stroke, who cares as long as it gets me to the fishing spot. Well, let me tell you, this was like bringing a smartphone to a flip phone convention. When Suzuki entered the market a year later in 1965 with their D55, a peppy little 5.5 HP two-stroke, and everyone else was pumping out these loud, smoky two-strokes that sounded like angry chainsaws and left an oil slick worthy of the Exxon Valdez. Honda was over here building engines that purred like kittens and sipped fuel like a church lady sips her Sunday tea. The real genius of Honda's approach wasn't just the technology, it was the timing. See, by the late 1960s, environmental regulations were starting to tighten up faster than a rusty bolt. The first protected marine area in the world was created in the Biscayne Bay, Florida, and suddenly people started caring about those oil slicks trailing behind their boats. Lakes were getting restricted, marine parks were cracking down on pollution, and suddenly Honda's clean-running four-strokes didn't look so quirky anymore. They looked like the future. Meanwhile, Suzuki was watching this unfold with great interest. They'd entered the market with traditional two-strokes, following the established playbook. Their early engines like the DT5 and DT25 were solid, reliable performers that gave boaters what they expected. Good power, lightweight, and that distinctive two-stroke sound. But as the 1970s rolled into the 1980s, it became clear that the game was changing. Suzuki made a critical decision. They wouldn't just follow the market, they'd help lead it. In 1980, they became the first manufacturer to introduce oil injection for their two-stroke outboards eliminating the need to pre-mix oil and gas. It was a game-changer for convenience and helped reduce oil consumption. If you're enjoying this deep dive into marine history, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell, because later in this video, I'm going to reveal how Honda's BF200 engines faced serious corrosion challenges that nearly damaged their reputation. And trust me, it's a story you won't want to miss. Let's talk about some of the engines that really put Honda on the map. We've got to start with the BF90, introduced in 1995. This bad boy was like the Michael Jordan of outboard motors. While it didn't initially have VTEC technology, that came later with the BF225 in 2001, it was still revolutionary. 
The BF-90 and its sibling BF-75 were the first four-stroke outboards in their horsepower class, and they changed the game completely. What made these engines special wasn't just that they were four-strokes, it was how Honda built them. These engines featured automobile-derived components. Honda literally took parts from their car engines and marinized them. The crankshaft and connecting rods were borrowed from their automotive division, which meant these engines had the durability of a Honda Accord, but were designed for the water. It was brilliant, really. Why reinvent the wheel when you've already perfected it in your cars? The marine industry took notice. Suddenly, other manufacturers were scrambling to develop their own four-strokes. Yamaha jumped in, Mercury started working on their Verado line, and even die-hard two-stroke manufacturers like Evinrude had to acknowledge that the winds were a change in. But it was Suzuki's response that was particularly interesting. Rather than rushing a four-stroke to market, they continued refining their two-strokes while carefully developing their four-stroke technology. Then in 2001, Honda dropped a bomb on the industry. The BF-225, the world's first 225-horsepower four-stroke outboard, and the first marine engine to feature Honda's legendary VTEC technology. Yeah, that's right, the same VTEC that makes teenage Honda Civic drivers think they're Formula One racers. But on the water, VTEC was no joke. This thing could cruise all day at low RPMs, burning less fuel than a Prius in eco mode. Then when you needed to get home before the storm hit, it would kick into higher gear and haul your boat like it had a rocket strapped to it. The commercial fishing industry loved it. Charter captains who were burning through hundreds of gallons of fuel a week suddenly saw their fuel bills drop by 20 to 30 percent. The US Coast Guard took notice too, and in 2002, they put hundreds of BF-225s into service for their Homeland Security initiative. When you need reliability in life or death situations, that's a pretty strong endorsement. But Suzuki wasn't sitting idle. In 1994, they introduced their first four-stroke outboards, the DF9.9 and DF15. While Honda was going after the big horsepower market, Suzuki was methodically building from the ground up. Their approach was different, but equally smart. They focused on making their four-strokes the lightest in their class while maintaining the power boat as expected. The DF60 and DF70, introduced in 1997, were the first Suzuki four-strokes with electronic fuel injection, and they won the NMMA Innovation Award that year. The real battle heated up in 2003 when Suzuki introduced the DF250, the industry's first 250-horsepower four-stroke outboard. Not to be outdone, they also launched their first V6 four-strokes that year. The message was clear. Anything Honda could do, Suzuki could match or beat. The DF250 won another NMMA Innovation Award, and suddenly Honda had a serious rival in the four-stroke game. The BF250 was introduced in 2011 as part of a major redesign that included the BF200, BF225, and BF250. These engines featured something called Blast, boosted low-speed torque, which sounds like something out of a superhero movie, but actually gave you significantly more torque at low speeds. What did that mean in real terms? It meant you could pull a water skier out of the water with authority, or get a heavily loaded boat on plane without having to gun it like you're trying to escape the cops. Now let's not pretend either company's journey was all sunshine and smooth sailing. Oh no, they both had some significant challenges that tested their reputations. For Honda, the most notable were the corrosion issues that affected some BF200, 225, 250 models, particularly those built in the early to mid-2000s. Picture this, you've just dropped serious money on a Honda BF225, convinced by all the marketing about Honda's legendary reliability. Then you start noticing corrosion in the midsection, particularly around the exhaust areas. The problem was most prevalent in saltwater environments, where some owners reported severe corrosion that could lead to water intrusion into the engine. One boater I spoke with described finding pieces of his midsection that he could literally break off with his fingers. Not exactly what you want to see on your supposedly bulletproof Honda. 
The situation was serious enough that Honda issued several service bulletins and made design improvements to address the issue. The improved internal anodes upgraded the corrosion-resistant coatings and redesigned certain components. While there wasn't a formal recall or class action lawsuit, as some have claimed, Honda did work with effective customers on a case-by-case -case basis, and many dealers helped facilitate repairs. To Honda's credit, they took the corrosion feedback seriously and made continuous improvements. The newer generation BF200 225-250 engines introduced in 2019 featured significantly enhanced corrosion protection including improved paint processes, better drainage systems, and upgraded materials in critical areas. They even changed the shape of the oil pump and cylinder head gaskets to provide better water drainage and prevent corrosion. Suzuki had their own challenges too. While they didn't face the same corrosion issues, they struggled with market perception in North America. Despite having excellent engines, they were seen as the underdog. The third or fourth choice after Mercury and Yamaha, their dealer network was smaller, parts availability could be spotty in some areas, and many mechanics were simply more familiar with other brands. Before we dive into some of the challenges these companies faced, if you're finding this insider information valuable, drop a like on this video and leave a comment about your experiences with Honda or Suzuki outboards. Your stories help other boaters make informed decisions. But here's where things get interesting. Both companies learned from each other's successes and failures. When Honda introduced VTEC, Suzuki responded with their own variable valve timing. When Suzuki introduced the first 300 horsepower four-stroke with the DF300 in 2006, Honda knew they had to up their game. The DF300 was a monster, the first outboard to utilize electronic remote control and featuring Suzuki precision control with electronic throttle and shift systems. The competition between these two pushed innovation at a breakneck pace. Suzuki's DF200 AP, introduced with their selective rotation technology, allowed boat builders to use standard rotation for both engines on twin engine setups, simplifying boat design and reducing parts inventory. It was clever engineering that solved a real problem, and it won over many boat manufacturers, especially in the bass boat market where Suzuki has become incredibly popular. So where do things really stand between Honda and Suzuki today? In the global outboard market, Yamaha and Mercury are generally considered the market leaders, with Honda and Suzuki competing for smaller but significant portions of the market. In North America specifically, Mercury dominates with Yamaha as a strong second, while Suzuki has been gaining ground and Honda maintains a smaller but loyal following. What's fascinating is how each company has carved out its niche. Suzuki has found great success with engines like the DF140, which is widely regarded as a class-leading engine in the 140 horsepower category. At 396 pounds, it's one of the lightest in its class, and with features like drive-by-wire technology that used to be reserved for much larger engines, it offers incredible value. Their contra-rotating propeller system on the DF350A, introduced in 2017, represents genuinely innovative engineering that provides better thrust and reduced steering torque. Honda, on the other hand, has built its reputation on different strengths. They dominate in the small engine category under 60 HP, where their reputation for reliability and ease of use makes them the go-to choice for dinghies, small fishing boats, and tenders. In the commercial market, Honda is king. Rental companies, commercial fishing operations, and government agencies overwhelmingly choose Honda. As one marina owner in Florida told me, when you're renting engines to tourists who think neutral is a suggestion, you want something that can take abuse. That's Honda. The technology race continues today with both companies pushing boundaries in their own ways. Honda's latest engines feature their progressive V-form, hull design, and advanced digital control systems. The BF350 V8 introduced in 2023 represents Honda's most powerful outboard to date. It's loaded with exclusive Honda features and represents their first ever V8 production engine. Meanwhile, Suzuki counters with their lean burn control system, which adjusts the air-fuel mixture based on operating conditions to optimize fuel economy. Looking ahead, the battle between these two titans is evolving with the times. 
Environmental regulations continue to tighten globally, and both companies are adapting. Honda is leveraging its extensive experience with hybrid and electric vehicles in the automotive sector to explore cleaner marine propulsion options. They've shown concept models of electric propulsion systems, and in 2021, they introduced a concept model of a compact electric propulsion system as part of their goal to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. Suzuki, meanwhile, has taken a different approach to environmental concerns. They've introduced innovative features like their microplastic collecting device on certain models. The world's first for outboard motors. It's a simple but clever device that collects microplastics from the cooling water before its return to the ocean. They're also focusing heavily on connectivity and digital integration with their Suzuki Marine Connect system, which allows boat owners to monitor their engine's performance and schedule maintenance through a smartphone app. The outboard market is also becoming increasingly competitive from other directions. Chinese manufacturers are entering the market with lower-priced options, though they haven't yet matched the refinement and reliability of the Japanese manufacturers. There's growing interest from new players in electric marine propulsion, and companies like Torquedo and E-Propulsion are making waves with their electric outboards. Though battery technology still needs to advance significantly before electric outboards can match the range and convenience of traditional engines for most applications, the writing is on the wall. The future of marine propulsion will likely be electric, at least for smaller boats. So what's the verdict in the Honda vs Suzuki battle? The truth is, both companies produce excellent engines that have pushed the entire industry forward. Honda brought the four-stroke revolution to the marine world and continues to leverage their automotive expertise to create refined, reliable engines. Their commitment to clean, quiet operation has never wavered since that first GB30 in 1964. They've proven that four-stroke technology can be just as powerful and even more efficient than traditional two-strokes. Suzuki entered the four-stroke game later, but has proven to be an innovative competitor, often being first to market with new horsepower ratings and creative solutions like selective rotation and contra-rotating propellers. They've shown that being the underdog can be an advantage, forcing you to be more creative and more responsive to customer needs. Both companies have had their successes and challenges. What matters is that their competition has given boaters more choices, cleaner engines, better fuel economy, and more advanced features than ever before. The rivalry has pushed both companies to continually improve, and the real winners are the boaters who get to enjoy the fruits of this competition. Whether you're Team Honda or Team Suzuki, one thing's for sure. The rivalry between these two Japanese giants has given us some of the best marine engines ever built. And with new technologies on the horizon and environmental challenges to meet, the next chapter in this rivalry promises to be even more exciting than the last. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the Honda-Suzuki rivalry, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. We've got more marine industry insider stories coming your way, including an exclusive look at Mercury's latest innovations. Drop a comment below telling us whether you're Team Honda or Team Suzuki, and share your best or worst experiences with either brand. And remember, it doesn't matter if you're running a Honda or a Suzuki, what matters is that you're out on the water, making memories and catching fish, or at least telling stories about the one that got away. Until next time, keep your props clean and your oil fresh.